Today, we're diving into one of the cornerstones of American democracy, the US constitutional amendments. These amendments have shaped the country's laws, culture, and values since the founding of the United States. But what exactly are they? Why were they created? And what purpose do they serve today? Stick around as we break down each of the 27 amendments, explain their origins, and discuss how they continue to be relevant in our modern society. The Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments. Let's start with the first 10 amendments, known collectively as the Bill of Rights. Ratified in 1791, these amendments were created to protect individual liberties and limit government power. They were a response to calls from the anti-federalists, who feared that the original constitution gave too much power to the federal government without adequately protecting individual rights. First Amendment. Freedom of speech, religion, press, assembly, and petition. The First Amendment is arguably the most famous. It protects the freedoms of speech, religion, press, assembly, and the right to petition the government. Why was this necessary? In colonial times, citizens faced persecution for speaking out against the British crown or practicing certain religions. By enshrining these freedoms, the founders aimed to prevent government tyranny and ensure that citizens could express their ideas without fear. Today, this amendment is still at the center of debates around free speech on social media, the rights of protesters, and the separation of church and state. Second Amendment, right to bear arms. The Second Amendment guarantees the right to bear arms. The founders included this to ensure that citizens could defend themselves, not just against criminals, but also against a potentially oppressive government. In the wake of the Revolutionary War, many Americans believed that an armed populace was a safeguard against tyranny. Today, it's a highly debated topic, particularly around issues of gun control, self-defense laws, and the right to carry firearms in public. Third Amendment no quartering of soldiers. During colonial times, the British military forced citizens to house soldiers in their homes without consent. This amendment was created to ensure that in peacetime, citizens would never have to quarter soldiers without approval. While it's not frequently cited today, it underscores the principle of privacy and property rights. In the modern era, it's often referenced in discussions about government intrusion into private homes and spaces. Fourth Amendment, protection from unreasonable searches and seizures. The Fourth Amendment was a response to the arbitrary searches conducted by British authorities. It protects citizens from unreasonable searches and seizures, requiring law enforcement to obtain warrants based on probable cause. This serves to protect individual privacy and prevent government abuse of power. Today, it's highly relevant in debates over surveillance, data privacy, and the limits of police authority during searches and arrests. Fifth Amendment, protection of rights to life, liberty, and property. The Fifth Amendment includes several key rights. The right to due process, protection against self-incrimination, and the prohibition of double jeopardy. It also outlines the government's obligation to provide fair compensation when taking private property for public use, known as eminent domain. These protections ensure that individuals are treated fairly under the law. In modern times, the Fifth Amendment is often invoked in criminal trials, eminent domain cases, and discussions around police interrogations. Sixth Amendment, rights of accused persons in criminal cases. This amendment provides the right to a speedy and public trial, an impartial jury, and the right to legal counsel. The founders included this to prevent the government from imprisoning individuals without giving them a fair chance to defend themselves, ensuring that justice is not delayed or denied. Today, it's a fundamental part of the justice system, impacting criminal trials, public defenders, and the rights of the accused in court proceedings. Seventh Amendment, right to a jury trial in civil cases. The Seventh Amendment guarantees the right to a jury trial in civil cases involving disputes over property or money exceeding a certain value. This was included to prevent the government from bypassing the jury system in favor of judges who might be more easily influenced. Its relevance continues today in civil litigation, reinforcing the right to have disputes settled by a jury of peers rather than solely by a judge. Eighth Amendment, protection from cruel and unusual punishment. 
To prevent the government from imposing excessive bail, fines, or cruel and unusual punishment, the founders added the Eighth Amendment. It was a direct response to the harsh penalties that colonial-era governments often imposed. In today's world, it's central to debates over the death penalty, prison reform, bail practices, and what constitutes cruel and unusual in the context of modern criminal justice. Ninth Amendment, rights retained by the people. This amendment states that the enumeration of specific rights in the Constitution does not mean that people do not have other rights. It was included to clarify that just because a right isn't listed doesn't mean it can be infringed upon ensuring that individual liberties extend beyond what is explicitly mentioned. In modern times, it's frequently cited in arguments for privacy rights, bodily autonomy, and other freedoms not explicitly outlined in the Constitution. Tenth Amendment, states' rights. The Tenth Amendment affirms that any powers not delegated to the federal government are reserved for the states or the people. This was included to limit federal authority and preserve the autonomy of the states. Today, it continues to be relevant in debates over state versus federal power, including issues like education policy, marijuana legalization, and healthcare. Part two, the later amendments, expanding rights and refining government. 11th Amendment, 1795, state sovereign immunity. This amendment limits the ability of individuals to sue states in federal court. It was created in response to a Supreme Court decision that allowed a private citizen to sue the state of Georgia. The states wanted to protect their sovereign immunity from such lawsuits. Today, it still plays a role in legal cases involving states' rights and the limits of federal jurisdiction. 12th Amendment, 1804, revising presidential elections. The 12th Amendment changed how the Electoral College functioned. Originally, the runner-up in the presidential election became vice president but this system proved problematic. The 1800 election exposed flaws when Thomas Jefferson and Aaron Burr tied, so this amendment ensured separate votes for president and vice president. Its relevance today is evident in discussions about the Electoral College and potential reforms to the presidential election process. 13th Amendment, 1865, Abolition of Slavery. Ratified after the Civil War, the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the United States. This was a monumental change, ending the legal institution of slavery and representing a significant shift toward human rights and equality. Today, it serves as the foundation for civil rights protections and is often cited in efforts to combat modern forms of slavery, such as human trafficking. 14th Amendment, 1868. Equal protection under the law. To protect the rights of newly freed slaves, the 14th Amendment granted citizenship to all people born or naturalized in the US, and it required states to provide equal protection under the law. It has since been a key amendment in numerous landmark Supreme Court cases, including those related to civil rights, voting rights, and gender equality. Its relevance remains strong today in ongoing debates over immigration, discrimination, and equal protection. 15th Amendment, 1870 voting rights for all races. This amendment granted African-American men the right to vote. It was a direct response to efforts by some states to disenfranchise newly freed slaves. While it took nearly a century for its promise to be fully realized, it laid the groundwork for the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Today, the 15th Amendment continues to be invoked in cases of voter suppression and gerrymandering. 16th Amendment, 1913, Federal income tax. The 16th Amendment authorized Congress to levy an income tax. Before this, the federal government primarily relied on tariffs and excise taxes. This amendment was intended to provide a stable revenue source, allowing the government to fund its growing responsibilities. Its relevance today is evident in ongoing debates over tax policy, income inequality, and government funding. 17th Amendment, 1913, direct election of senators. Originally U.S. debt, senators were chosen by state legislatures. The 17th Amendment established the direct election of senators by popular vote. This change was part of the progressive era reforms aimed at making government more responsive and accountable to the people. Today, it remains a critical component of democratic representation in Congress. 18th Amendment 1919, Prohibition of Alcohol. 
This amendment prohibited the manufacture, sale, and transportation of alcohol. It was driven by the temperance movement, which argued that alcohol was the root cause of social ills. However, it led to widespread illegal activity and was eventually repealed by the 21st Amendment. Its legacy is still discussed in the context of drug prohibition and government regulation of personal behavior. 19th Amendment, 1920, Women's Suffrage. The 19th Amendment granted women the right to vote. It was the culmination of decades of activism and marked a significant expansion of democratic participation in the United States. Today, it continues to symbolize the ongoing fight for gender equality and women's rights in various spheres of society. 20th Amendment, 1933. Terms of President and Congress. Known as the Lame Duck Amendment, this changed the start dates for the terms of the President, Vice President, and Congress. It aimed to reduce the period of inaction between Election Day and the beginning of new terms. Today, it ensures a smoother transition of power between outgoing and incoming elected officials. 21st Amendment, 1933. Repeal of Prohibition. The only amendment to repeal another, the 21st Amendment, ended prohibition. It recognized the failure of the 18th Amendment and allowed states to control alcohol regulation. Its relevance today is often mentioned in debates over drug legalization and state control over various substances. 22nd Amendment, 1951, Presidential Term Limits. After Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected to four terms, the 22nd Amendment was passed to limit presidents to two terms. It was meant to prevent any one person from holding too much power for too long. Today, it's central to discussions about executive power and the balance between stability and change in government leadership. 23rd Amendment, 1961, D.C. Electoral Votes. This amendment gave residents of Washington, D.C. the right to vote in presidential elections by granting the district electors in the Electoral College. Its relevance today extends to debates over D.C. statehood and representation for residents in federal government matters. 24th Amendment, 1964. Abolition of poll taxes. The 24th Amendment made it illegal to require a poll tax for voting in federal elections. This was a direct effort to remove barriers that disenfranchised poor and minority voters, particularly in the South. Today, it remains relevant in discussions about voter ID laws, voting accessibility, and potential forms of voter suppression. 25th Amendment, 1967. Presidential succession. Clarifying the procedures for presidential succession and disability, this amendment was created after concerns arose during times when presidents were incapacitated. It formalized the process of the vice president stepping in if the president could not perform their duties. Today, it's frequently referenced whenever questions about presidential health and capacity arise. 26th Amendment, 1971. Voting age lowered to 18. Prompted by arguments during the Vietnam War era, if you're old enough to fight, you're old enough to vote. The 26th Amendment lowered the voting age from 21 to 18. Its relevance continues today in discussions about youth engagement in politics and whether further changes to the voting age should be considered. 27th Amendment, 1992. Congressional pay raises, originally proposed in 1789 and not ratified until 1992, the 27th Amendment prevents laws affecting congressional salary from taking effect until after the next election. It serves as a check on Congress's ability to grant itself immediate pay raises. Today, it remains a safeguard against potential conflicts of interest and abuse of power by elected officials. The amendments to the US Constitution reflect the country's evolving values, priorities, and efforts to balance power between the government and the people. They were created to protect rights, adapt to changing times, and address societal issues. From free speech to voting rights, these amendments are still incredibly relevant, influencing debates and legal decisions in our daily lives. If you enjoyed this breakdown, be sure to check out our next video where we explore key Supreme Court cases that have shaped how these amendments are interpreted today.